Hello, this is going to be a very niche video. It's already, we're already in quite niche territory when talking about FPV, but I'm talking specifically about people who bought the Beta FPV Light Radio 2 SE, not to be confused with the regular Beta FPV Light Radio 2. This is the SE edition. Uh, the difference is it's got a USB C instead of a micro USB, and you're a Mac owner. Uh, that probably puts us down to like me and about three other people, but I got some new information and I wanted to share it with you. If you remember, um, if you watched my original review, the problem I had with this radio and my Mac was when I plugged it in, the mouse went crazy. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so this is my little MacBook Air from 2017. As you can see, it's running High Sierra. This is kind of the family laptop. We um, it, it sort of goes in the lounge and everybody uses it to do, you know, Amazon and food shopping. As you can see, the mouse moves about. Here's our little Beta FPV joystick. And if you watch what happens when I plug it in to that cursor, which is over there. Zoom. It zooms down to the bottom screen. If I try and bring it up again, it, it keeps going down. Now I can actually use this switch here and it's slower. So if I go up there, Look, it sort of goes along, and even this other switch makes it move, which is crazy. The crazy thing about this is it is actually still detected as a joystick. You see, I've got it plugged in my SIM here, but yeah, the mouse pointer keeps moving around, so you can't really use it because if you go back a screen, it's then you know, you, you got to you know, time it right and say start, and then you, you, know, you can use it that way. So that is a really, really weird situation in, in that we're in there. So one thing I thought about doing is, like, could I run my own device driver for this to sort of override it? I wasn't, I wasn't happy the fact I couldn't use it. And when I looked into doing that, um, I was unable to even compile the code on my Mac because Apple told me I didn't have the um, Apple developer membership in order to do that, even on my own system and I could run and test stuff on my own iPhone but uh, without being an official developer you can't do anything there. This is because it goes into, it, it used to be that you had to write a kernel extension for this, there's now this dynamic extension called a DXT, I think that's what you would use, which goes into user space which is a lot less dangerous but it wouldn't even let me try doing one of those. But since I put the app out onto the App Store and you can still get it there, there it is, um, I obviously had to become an Apple developer to do that and pay them a hundred bucks essentially and that gives you the ability to be able to develop stuff like these DX. But I got a bit of a shock when I plugged this guy in because one of the things I had to do to actually get my app onto the App Store is upgrade my operating system. I was running quite happily on Mojave which is the last OS that you could run 32-bit apps on and I didn't want to upgrade because A I didn't want to not be able to run 32-bit apps and um, I was a bit concerned that in later releases it, they were locking things down even more. So in order to run stuff that didn't come from an official app store, wasn't signed, was worse. But literally it was the case of like, I had to use the latest iPhone SDK. And to do that, I had to use the latest version of Xcode. And to get the latest version of Xcode, I had to be on a later version of Mac OS. As stupid as that sounds. I tried doing it in a VM um, but it, the, comp the compilation wouldn't work. It was coming up with an unknown error, which I felt must be down to VM. So I jumped a couple of versions, went all the way up to Big Sur. I got my app out. Um, I lost <laughs> a whole bunch of 32-bit apps, some of which were like dodgy versions of some Adobe stuff anyway. But, um, but obviously, if you wanted Adobe stuff now, you couldn't buy it. You'd have to be on the, um, the subscription stuff, which I don't do. Half my Steam library disappeared. There was a lot more 32-bit apps than I'd imagined, but, you know, I've kind of got around it. It wasn't too bad overall. Then a weird thing happened. I plugged this in. So here we have my iMac that I use on a daily basis, which is a 2019 27-inch um, iMac. There's no particular model. Um, and it's now running Big Sur, as you can see there. Now, if I go ahead and plug this guy in here, you will see that, look, I can still move this around and nothing's happening. And similarly, if I pop my SIM up there, you can see that the mouse stays where it's put. This still works as a radio. I'm using this in 
uh, a window bow so you can actually see the uh, pointer and I can just go in and, and say fly to see him and we're off and up and running there. This is really hard to do for a camera lens. Anyway, uh, Big Sur fine, High Sierra not fine. So there you go, at, at least on High Sierra, Mojave, this won't work nicely on a Mac. I don't know what the situation is on Catalina. Um, I'm, I'm having a guess it might not work because I figure more people are on it and more people have fed back to say it works for me. Um, but maybe it does. If you guys can let me know, I can like do an update on the thumbnail or whatever to show people that it does work. And certainly it does work on Big Sur. It also means that even if I wanted the right device driver, because it works on my system, I can't tell <laughs> if my device driver is going to work. And if I run out Mojave in a virtual machine, which I have done, so I still get access to a couple of apps that I still needed, um, I can't get it to recognise this joystick. It just stays on the host, so I can't make it go wrong in order to fix it. So it's kind of a case of like, upgrade your iOS and this will work eventually. That said, um, I still wouldn't necessarily recommend buying this. I would say, save up a little bit more, get something like the Jumper T-Lite or the Radio Master T8. None of which I've actually used, but they've got a screen, they're running OpenTX. They've got so much more flexibility and power available to you that way. But anyway, that's just an update I thought you guys would like to know, just in case somebody out there is stuck, not able to use it, or you were thinking of getting one and then like, well, will it work? Yes, if you're on the right version, but there you go. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful for all four of us that actually have the combination of a Mac and this and do FPV. Uh, for the rest of you, thanks for watching anyway. I'll catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.